sense to change. It's called learning. Some people would rather read an ancient book than learn. And with, this has been a very good evidence of that. For example, to say something is inconceivable just means you can't conceive it. But the great thing about the universe, and the reason that I do science, is that the universe has a much greater imagination than we do. In fact, there are more things in heaven and earth that are dreamt of in your philosophy. And that's what's wonderful about the universe. Things that are inconceivable happen all the time. And what, we, what that does is that expands our mind. And expanding our minds to conform to the evidence of reality is common sense. Human civilization began by putting purpose and, and, and intelligent purpose behind gods associated with the sun, the moon, the planets, the wind, the earth, the oceans. There, it's been by one estimate over a thousand different gods throughout human history. Mars, God of War, Poseidon, Thor, all the rest. And the really important thing is that all of you, or almost all of you probably, are now atheists regarding those gods. Just The only difference is it's just one that we may disagree about. But 999, we all agree, have been thrown out. And the reason they've been thrown out is they've been buried by the rise of our physical understanding. Science works. And the fact that science works has buried the gods of the wind and the sun and the moon. Farmers now, as I was just saying, when it, when it doesn't rain, they don't pray for rain anymore. They go see a meteorologist. And that's a good thing. In the process, the human condition has improved immensely, and it will continue to improve as science continues to bury the one remaining God. Now, this one God is supposedly left. We might ask a priori or in advance, how, how likely is it in advance that, that all those other 999 gods were false, but this one's true? Well, you might argue if you had a flat prior, that a probably pretty small likelihood. But it doesn't really matter. The point is that our current understanding of nature has changed. We've learned things. It's changed and developed since the claims were made by Iron Age peasants who didn't even know the Earth orbited the Sun. And therefore, it's natural that science is inconsistent with those claims based on ignorance. And we shouldn't revere those ancient claims as sacred. They're ignorant. There's still many open questions. I'll try my one, my ten seconds of humility. It'll be the only time tonight. There's a lot we don't know about the universe, a lot more we don't know than we do. That's the wonder of science, that's why I'm a scientist. But it is intellectually lazy to just stop asking questions and stop looking for physical explanations and just say God did it. That doesn't mean I respect ideas. Okay, some ideas are ridiculous. And that's perfectly reasonable. In fact, ridiculing ideas is what makes progress. So if I offend some of you, I don't mean to offend you personally. I may offend some of your ideas, but I don't, that doesn't bother me at all. Just as if, just in fact, if you confront my ideas, um, it will lead to a discussion. Um, what does offend me, of course, is offending personal freedom and, and equal rights, and that's one of the reasons why I got upset at the beginning of this um, uh, session. But that's been fixed, and I thank the organizers for that as well, to agreeing to not segregate this room in the 21st century is a great step forward, and I appreciate that. Um, now, you know, I'm really shocked. <laughs> First of all, all of the, I've watched uh, 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 Mr. Sources, right? Sources. My Greek is pretty good. Right? Greek gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous. Well, you are rather gorgeous. <laughs> gorgeous George over here. Um, uh, has all, I, I've watched some of these, and they're always exactly the same. So I thought they'd be different this time. Um, and it always begins with you, and I'm supposed to respond to you. But, and I will, to some extent, but it's hard to respond to nonsense. And in fact, the point of this is not is is not a question: Does God exist? It's not. That's not the question. It's atheism or I Islam or atheism, uh, which is more sensible? I think is what it says, or something like that. Now, I I was just shocked because because I thought that you wouldn't bother to try and pretend you knew science, because you don't. And we're going to go through that in in real detail. Everything you said is nonsense when it comes to science. So we'll go through and we'll have a little chat if that's okay. Okay, good. Um, and, and so I found it uh, remarkable that you began with that kind of nonsense, and we'll, we'll continue from that. But let me just first begin with the fact that the, um, that the premise of this debate is in some sense inappropriate. Um, 
because it, it suggests two things. First of all, it suggests that Islam is something special, and it isn't. It's not special at all. It's one of a thousand religions that have, or more that have existed since the dawn of humanity, all of which claim divine revelation, all of which claim perfection, all of which contain, can, uh, proclaim infinite knowledge, uniqueness, beauty, etc. So Islam is just a religion like any other religion. And there's no difference. It's, it's, it proclaims just as the Rig Veda did and Akhenaten in ancient Egypt that the universe had a beginning, nothing special, okay? It, there's, there's absolutely nothing special. The question is, Islam as one of a thousand religions, all of which make the same claims, but in mutually inconsistent ones. So one of the things we know is, of these thousand religions, they all make mutually inconsistent claims, so they can't all be correct. In fact, at best, one of them can be correct, because they're not, they're not consistent with each other. So that means a priori, just a priori, and I mean, you know like that, you like that term instead of a posteriori. I've heard you say that. A priori, Islam has a probability of 0.1% of being correct, because it's just one of a thousand religions, and one of them is, it, 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 at most is correct. But since they all make the same claims, it's probable that none of them are correct. So, that's, so treating Islam specially is inappropriate. Then atheism is somehow, as has been described, speaker, a belief system. It's not a belief system like like uh, Islam or Judaism or Christianity or the Norse myths or or or, or Zeus or Thor or any of the other uh, myths that have been created throughout human history. It's all it's saying is, it's not a belief system. It's saying, you know what? We don't choose to believe that stuff because there's, it's not sensible. So it's not saying we believe X. It's saying. Well, this, this myth is inconsistent with this myth, or this myth is inconsistent with what we know about the universe, and therefore, it's unlikely to be true. So what atheism is, it's just saying, this is unlikely to be true. It's not a belief system. So to compare one versus the other is, of course, false. It's a false premise. And when it comes to the origin of the universe, we are coming remarkably close to the realization that you don't need any miracle for that either. And that's because our knowledge of the universe is changing, not because we want to get rid of God, but because the more we learn, the less we need anything outside of the laws of physics and chemistry and biology. But it's good because science does more than that. It just doesn't just tell us about the world. It makes the world a better place. It gets rid of the vile, awful, immoral works like the Bible. The worldview that I would argue is guides most of you in this room today, including those of you people of faith, which I assume is some fraction of the people in this audience. Those spiritual values of any educated person today are largely the worldview given us by science. You, your worldview is vastly different than it would have been four centuries ago. By stripping ecclesiastical authority of its credibility on factual matters, which we've certainly done, we cast doubt on its claims to certainty in matters of morality, which is great. Because we now think that women are equal to men, that we don't hate gays. All of the stupid myths that are permeated by various religions. The facts of science, moreover, force us to take responsibility for the welfare of ourselves, our species, and our planet. And that is what we need to do in the 21st century. Now, here's, here's an idea of why common sense should tell you that Islam, like many other religions, is not common sense. Because of course homosexuality is perfectly natural. In all, in all animal species almost it's natural. It occurs with a 10% frequency. Okay? In fact, there are good evolutionary reasons for homosexuality. So in that sense, there's no reason in a fundamental... Why would a god who thought it was a sin make it natural among all species? I don't think the sheep, by the way, which 10% of sheep are long-term homosexual relationships. Okay? <laughs> Why would a god who thought it was a sin create sheep who don't have a soul, who, can't, who aren't able to think about it, be homosexual? That's the kind of nonsense that we have to ask, and the only way we can determine if it's nonsense is by looking at the world around us, not by deducing it, not by listening to the words of ignorant individuals and Iron Age, Iron Age peasants who didn't even know the Earth orbit of the sun. Wisdom and learning comes from observing the world around us, and we shouldn't take our wisdom from people who didn't even understand the way the world worked. Thank you. I would say morality is impossible without science. That's the point. Because 
and, and religion is an example. As I, can't, as I say, I can't think of a more immoral document than the Old Testament. But, but the, the point is, if you don't know the consequences of your actions, then you can't even decide what's right and wrong. And so to, to, to take, to, to make the, and so we have seen people's morality, if you want to call it morality, change. Slavery might have been okay because you might have believed that certain groups were inferior or not human. Science has told us that's wrong. You might have believed, as almost all religions do, that women are chattel. Science has told us that's wrong. You might have believed that homosexuality is evil. But science has told us that all mammalian species have homosexuality. That's, there's nothing in unnatural or evil about it. So to, to have a morality without science is empty. But the Islamic God, much like the Judeo-Christian God, is a real creep. This is a God, worse than Saddam Hussein, instead of tor torturing you just for your life, tortures you for infinity, forgive me the word, but eternity, let me use that word, eternity for not believing. For not believing, you're tortured for infinity. The tortures are actually described in the Quran, and you know it as well as I do. And the point is, if you just ask yourself common sense, if you were a divine being, say you had an ant colony, that you made in your house. Would you be offended if those ants didn't pay homage to you five to, well, let's start with 50 times a day before Muhammad cut it down to 30 and then five. Would you be offended if those ants didn't pay homage to you five times a day? And if they didn't, if they didn't look up to you or didn't recognize your existence, would you destroy them? No, I mean, it just seems so petty. So why should we believe in a hateful, unmerciful, petty, sadomasochistic, homophobic, sexist God. It's just irrational. It's not sensible. And, and the, the point is that I, what my science is a human cultural activity. And in fact, if you read my writing, you'll see that I say the worth of science, in my opinion, is not from the technology. We tend to love its technology, which has made the world a happier, healthier place for most people. But it's the fact that like art and music and literature, it forces us to reassess our place in the cosmos. It, it, it opens our eyes to the world. And art and music and literature do that, but so does science. And there's no sense in which science reduces the value of art, music, and literature. As, 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 and in fact, the most famous example I know of in that regard is from Richard Feynman, I wrote a book about it, who said that a rainbow isn't any less beautiful because you understand how it's caused, it's much more beautiful. When you understand the amazing things that are happening, in fact, it's much more exciting. That's the great thing about science, which you can call atheism, if you wish, is you're willing to change your beliefs. You're not assuming the answers before you ask the question. You're not assuming you know what's divinely right, just because you interpret a certain book to mean a certain thing, and someone else may interpret it to mean something else. You will agree there are different interpretations of every book, including the Bible and the Koran. And so, you, to presume that you know divine truth before you've asked the universe is not sensible. I think what you said is correct. You found, a, you found a way to find an ethical theory that makes those two apparently inconsistent things consistent. Okay? Yeah, right. And I think, and I've had a lot of discussions on stage and off stage with various theologians whose job is to do just that, to find ways to resolve apparent inconsistencies, to find ethical solutions that validate their belief. But that is what's wrong. Because the point of science, and the reason it works, is you don't just try and prove something you like to be true, you also try and prove it to be false. And that's what's really important. You don't just find a way to say the rainbows are caused by this or that. You actually try and see if your ideas are wrong, and ask what's more plausible, and based on evidence and, and inquiry, what's more plausible. So what I find problematic is that the effort to find a rational excuse for something can work, but that doesn't make it right.